What is up, Substance? Come on, make some noise in your pajamas wherever you are at. Man, you made it to church. I know it's hard to believe, but come on, this is our snow day service. And of course, I'm so blessed that you're joining us online. And and again, if you're a visitor, I'm Pastor Peter. And I'm just here to say, a foot of snow cannot stop us from having church. In fact, there's something totally fun about this. I got my Bible, I got my coffee, and guess what? Although I look like I dressed up for you, I'm still wearing sweatpants. Come on, somebody. (laughs) I'm just saying I'm comfy and I'm going to do this because I'm going to preach better because I'm wearing sweatpants right now. So, uh, but, but seriously, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have church and I know this is a a little bit different, but here's what we're going to do is we're going to just spend a little time worshiping together in our homes. And I realized that the idea of even just worshiping in our homes might seem strange, but I'm telling you, there's still the power of unity. There's still going to be a thousand people at least that are going to be watching this and are going to be worshiping right along with you right here uh, as you watch this video. And there's power when we surrender. And so in a second, what we're actually going to do, and this is going to be kind of fun, is we're going to roll one of our most recent worship videos from Substance IO, a live worship video. So it'll be just like you're at church worshiping. And then afterwards, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on back and I'm going to give some announcements and I'm going to share a nice little devotion with you guys. And and we're going we're gonna to worship together. Uh, but right now, here's what I want you to do. Is I just want you to get yourself into an attitude of worship, just an attitude of surrender. And, and, and I, I don't know what you're going through right now, but listen, I believe that God has things he wants to share with you. God has things he wants to share with me. And I I really believe that every single time we just stop and we acknowledge God and his presence, the peace of God falls on us. And some of you, man, you could use some joy. I believe that there's miracles that will happen as a result of this moment of surrender. So Heavenly Father, as we worship you today, as we gather together in this kind of strange format, uh, even for us in Minnesota, but maybe even for people that are joining us from all over the United States, all over the world, uh, Lord, that they could have a snow day, which is just really a day just to chill and experience your grace, Lord, whatever the weather looks like there. And I just pray for your presence to be with us as a church. We love lift you up and we sing your praise today. In Jesus name we pray. If you agree with that prayer, say amen and let's worship together.
Cause you want me more than I could Ever ask, ever dream, ever imagine My heart can't fathom this love for which I'm grasping There's no need for asking Lord, do you think I'm beautiful or do you think I'm worth it? Cause the king died for a servant and no, I don't deserve it But you gathered up my burdens and I can't tell them why Why you would choose to die, even more be crucified And hang there still alive, creator of the skies Bridge of the great divide with divinity Heavenly Father, we are here to hang on your words. Lord, we just acknowledge that uh, you give us this day our daily bread, and we want to experience your word in a fresh way. Lord, we do not want a day to go by where we are not ingesting the power of your your truths, Lord, to, to really hang on your word. And Lord, if there's people that just need healing today, I pray that you'd heal them, Lord. If there's people that just need reconciliation in their friendships and their family, Lord, that you would bring that about, God. I, I pray that as we just acknowledge you in this moment, all all these things that other people might worry about, Lord, we don't even have to worry because we just know that we know that you're taking care of them. Father, we thank you that you have not abandoned us to figure this out on our own, but you're here with us in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Man. It is so good to see you guys today, and I know that, uh, you know, with the snow day going on, we didn't want to make all of our volunteers risk their lives, but come on, there's some great things going on, not just at our church, but come on, there's also nothing better than worshiping God in your pajamas or whatever you're wearing right now, and uh, I'm so glad that I don't actually have to see some of you wear pajamas. Actually, you know, that would be kind of fun to do, like a pajama Sunday. Can you write that down, honey? All right, so, uh, but before I dive into the message, though, I, I want to hit a few announcements announcements really quick. Obviously, um, the first thing is without having church, uh, that means we're also not having offerings either. And obviously, I think it's, it's fairly obvious that the bills still have to be paid. So, um, you know what, if substance is your home, would you guys just help us out? by giving online today. Either go to our website or you can just text it in. It's actually quite simple. Uh, we have so many people that just register uh, their giving even through our, our website. It just makes giving so much easier for us. We're able to uh, really support all sorts of incredible efforts uh, without any fear um, and, and just be able to do that and really just watch God's kingdom increase. And so if you would just join us by giving there, but with all that said, uh, we're going to roll the announcements just like we would on our normal Sunday services. And so why don't you check these out? What's up, guys? It's Pastor Peter, and I've got some thrilling news to share again with you today. Many of you guys know we recently launched Substance Input Output, or Substance I.O. for short. 
You see, we believe that God wants to use our worship ministry and our music ministry to impact the world. And it's already happening. In fact, a few weeks back, we released a live music video for the song Hanging off our new Substance IO album. And within a week, we had over 50,000 views. And now we've already reached 79,000 people with the gospel simply because it was put into the context of a music video. I mean, come on, think about that. That's like filling US Bank Stadium and the Target Center. And so we're starting to realize that if we simply package the message of God right, the masses will listen. And this last Friday, we started taking everything to a whole new level. A few weeks back, I mentioned that we're launching another band called Substance Variant. Okay, so now Substance IO is our congregational worship project. It's where we write music that can be done in, in worship services. But Substance Variant, is unique in that it's 100% electronic dance music. In fact, you're actually listening to it right now. And really the goal is simple, is we wanted to write some music that could go straight into nightclubs and mainstream radio, impacting people with the gospel who would never step foot in a church or even listen to Christian radio. And so people who felt a lot like I did before I gave my life to Christ, you see, I was open to God, but I just didn't feel compatible with church. And so if you haven't downloaded the album yet, go do it right away. And if you actually go to our website, substancevariant.com, or scan the cards that we've been giving out, you can actually download the album for free. But it's also available for streaming on all the major music sites like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, etc. But the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because this week, we're releasing a music video for Variant, and we need your help to make this video go viral. And so, even if you could right now, log on to Facebook right now, go to the Substance Church page, and just share the video that we have posted there. You see, the reason why we reached 79,000 people last month is because so many of you helped us by sharing it on your Facebook and on your social media. And so, if you would, just help us out again by making sure that this video gets out there and to the masses. And also, this Tuesday, the 17th, Nick Folks, the Variant DJs, and I are actually gonna be performing the Substance Variant album for 3,500 pastors in Birmingham, Alabama. In other words, we're talking about 3,500 of the most influential pastors from all over the world. And oh my gosh, church, I wish that you guys could actually be in Alabama to experience it. And I'm kind of sad that we haven't even fully unveil uh, unveiled Variant to you guys first. But don't worry, we've got a plan to show it off here this summer as well. And so in the meantime though, I'm bringing all this up so that you guys would be praying for this. Um, this could very well be the biggest outreach we've ever done in our church's history. And so be praying about this. Love you guys. Well, as you guys can see, really exciting stuff is happening right here at Substance. Come on. In fact, even this last weekend on our release weekend, Variant made it all the way up to number eight on the mainstream iTunes charts for electronic dance music. I love that. Come on. I, and listen, church, this is just the beginning of what God is going to be doing through our church. I just, so even this week, the, the, the actual number has even increased in terms of the number of pastors uh, that variant will be debuting towards. It'll be well over 4,000 of the most influential pastors around the world that are going to be uh, rocking out to variant. And so it's going to be really fun. Make sure you're praying for me this week. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, but today what I want to do is I want to meditate on a Bible verse out of the Psalms that has just been ministering to me lately. I think with all this talk of even substance variant, you have to understand, I've been dreaming about some of this stuff so long that, uh, you know, now that it's starting to come to pass, it's really reassuring my faith. And I wanted to uh, just to watch God be faithful to some of those promises he gave me years and years and years ago, things that I knew I would be doing someday, but it just felt like forever off. And now that I'm kind of walking into that reality, I just, I, I feel so encouraged and I want to encourage you with, with a similar word. And, and one of those Bible verses comes out of Psalm 105, verse 19. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Uh, but it says this, Psalm 105, 19 says, Until the time came to fulfill Joseph's dreams, 
The Lord tested his character. Let me read that again. Until the time came to fulfill Joseph's dreams, the Lord tested his character. Now, as simple as that verse is, it actually tells us numerous things about dreams. First off, we all have dreams, right? Maybe your dream is to be married. Maybe your dream is to stay married. Maybe your dream is to have kids. Maybe your dream is to not kill your kids. I don't know. I just know that we all have dreams. We all have these things in our hearts. Maybe it's it's prof, uh, professional career dreams. But um, the first thing that we learn from Psalm 105, 19 is that there's a timing for our dreams, okay? Until the time came to fulfill Joseph's dreams, the Lord tested his character. There's a timing, okay? The, the second thing we can learn from this verse is that there's always a season of testing. God tests our character. Why? Because he's mean? No, because he loves us. He loves us so much that he doesn't want us to be blessed with things that will ultimately destroy us. And for many of us, a lot of our dreams would actually destroy us if they came true today. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but we just don't see what God sees or know what he knows. And I think, though, that when delays happen, I think it's easy to think that God doesn't love us, but I I, want to encourage you, listen, that's not true at all. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed that we start to think that our circumstances are bigger than God. But once again, that's not true at all. In fact, the Bible shows over and over and over again that it's not by strength that one prevails, 1 Samuel 2, 9 says. It's not by strength that one prevails. Prevails, And of course, I, I want to prove that to you by telling you about an Old Testament character named Yeshai. And uh, Yeshai was a, was a member of Judaism's high court. Okay, so he was a pretty big deal at the time uh, when he lived. And he was also very, very wealthy. And of course, everything about his life was in some ways ideal. He wasn't just wealthy. He was good looking. He had seven sons. But there was one blot on his family name that drove Yeshai nuts. Isn't that the way it always seems to be in our own lives? I mean, everything is great, but then there's just this one thing in our lives that isn't great, and we kind of just obsess over it. And that was, that was what was going on in Yeshai's life. You see, the thing that drove him nuts, that the, the, the blot on his family name was that according to the Torah, if a Jew ever married uh, someone from a pagan nation, then they were unfit for ceremonial use out to the 10th generation. Could you imagine if something you did affected your kids all the way out 10 generations? That's why the Bible talks about generational curses, and, and that's why we always break generational curses and things like that. But this was a... This this was a um, this was something that happened in Yeshai's family. Yeshai's grandfather actually married a widow from a foreign nation, and that you know that was his his grandfather. And so uh, Yeshai's family is now ceremonially unclean for ten generations. And of course, that just that drove him nuts. That that bothered him so much, and he he ended up living with a certain degree of fear that God wouldn't bless him because of that. Well. To deal with this, uh, Yeshai just made this decision that he was just going to stop having kids at seven, which I know sounds kind of mystical, but he thought that, you know what, number seven is the number of blessing in the in, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. When you see a number seven, it oftentimes means the number of blessing. And, and, and so he thought to himself, well, if I want to be blessed, then I need to stop having kids at seven. Okay, This, this, is, this is really what's going to result in the blessing coming back on my life. And so... Uh, to deal with this, Yeshai made the decision that he was going to stop having kids at seven. Um, but once again, the Torah uh, commentary said about Yeshai that he was so obsessed over this that in order to do this, he stopped making love to his wife and he refused to be intimate with her. He just kind of shut the door on the bedroom. And of course, his wife, I mean, imagine how it would feel to be the wife in this situation in the midst of her loneliness. She's thinking, I think my husband's nuts. You know what I mean? Like, really? Seven sons, that's going to be it? And so his wife, whose name was Nitzavet, uh, she decided, you know what? This is ridiculous. And so she, one night, she actually seduced her husband, got pregnant. And, of course, Yeshai, after when they found out that they were pregnant, he was so angry at her that he never forgave her. 
He, in fact, even after she gave birth to a son from that night, he wouldn't even allow her or the young boy to even eat at their dinner table anymore. They had to eat at a separate dinner table. That's how mad he was. And eventually, he told his whole family to reject that son. And eventually, he rejected the boy by forcing him to be a shepherd boy, which in Jewish society, shepherds were pretty much considered outcasts. And and if you're listening to me and you're thinking, you know what, I don't, I don't remember that Bible story. I can see my wife over here thinking, what, what story are you talking about? Because she knows the Bible really, really well. Well, okay, it's because most of what I shared with you actually comes out of the Torah commentary. However, the little boy I am talking about actually is from the Bible, and he's actually one of the most famous characters in the Bible. His name is David. And, yep, this is the same King David that we're talking about. This is the David who slew Goliath. You see, that illicit marriage that made his family impure was actually Boaz from the Old Testament story of Ruth. In fact, uh, Yishai is just my fancy little Hebrew pronunciation to kind of throw you off for the Bible character whose name is, is translated Jesse the father of David. And, and what I think makes this Old Testament story so inspiring, I think the reason why we love David is because David was always the ultimate underdog. I mean, time and time and time again, people would underestimate him, people would undermine him, and yet he always emerged on top. And, and what's crazy is he never got a fair deal. In fact, one, one last example, in, in 1 Samuel 16, there was a prophet by the name of Samuel, and, and God told Samuel, the prophet, hey, the king is going to come out of a specific family, the family of Yishai, of Jesse, right? So Samuel, he went to Jesse, told him, hey, listen, the Lord spoke to me. The next king is coming out of your family. I want you to bring all your boys to me so that I can choose one that the Lord has, is wanting me to anoint. And so, of course, Jesse, guess what he brought? He brought his seven sons to Samuel, but he didn't even bother to bring David, his eighth son. And why? Because, once again, Jesse didn't even think that his son David mattered. I mean, talk about winning the world's worst dad award. I mean, come on, when your own dad thinks, there's no way God would choose that son. Okay, that's pretty bad. And yet, who did he choose? He chose David. And, you know, when we read that, I, I always think to myself... Listen, I know there's so many people out there that they feel like they've got these big dreams and yet um, they get discouraged because they think, I don't matter. I'm not smart enough. I'm not qualified enough. Or, or maybe I'm just, I'm just too far behind to do ever, anything of significance or my parents didn't really set me up for success. Let me tell you something. You're wrong. Those thought processes, those wrong because you're, you're, those are wrong. You're not thinking like God thinks. In fact, listen to me, folks. You have permission to believe that God wants to use you. And some of you, you've been told your entire lives, there's no way you can do that. You're too young. You're too old. You don't have the right skin color. You're not the right gender. You're not wealthy enough. You don't live in the right place. You don't know the right people. You don't have a high enough number of followers on social media. Some of you, yeah, and you had terrible parents. But the Bible says, listen, his power is made perfect in weakness. It's not about your qualifications. It's about your willingness, your willingness to, to surrender to God. It's about God in your life. And if you're willing to solve a problem that God is passionate about, then you have permission to believe that God wants to use you. And, and I, I just, so I want to encourage you, even as you're dreaming your dreams, you know what? Life doesn't always work out. Come on. Sometimes snow days happen. They obstruct what we're trying to accomplish. Sometimes things don't look the way we want them to look. But listen, that doesn't mean that God's abandoned us or that God doesn't love us. Listen, until the appropriate time, until it was time to fulfill Joseph's dreams, God tested his character. All I want to encourage you to do is make sure you don't pass the test. And how do we do that? By simple surrender. Just by saying, God, I trust you. I trust you to meet me where I'm at today and resolve my circumstances, Lord, at your perfect timing. And maybe you're here and you're like, I don't even know if I'm a believer. I don't even know if I've ever really given my life to Christ. Or maybe you have, but you know it's time for a reset button. Well, just like we would do at our church services every Sunday morning, if that's you, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to end in prayer. 
And when I do, I want you just to take out your phone and I want you to text the word substance to 31996, okay? 31996, just text, just put the number 31996 in the text number and then write the word substance in the text area and then just press send. And we're gonna send you a little follow-up form so we can pray, pray for you. Once again, text the word substance to 31996 as an act of faith. The moment I start praying and I believe God is gonna move, amen? So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the delightful people who are watching this today. And I just pray that you would meet them where they're at, Lord. Meet, meet them to the degree of their surrender today. And uh, Lord, I, I know that you're taking care of all of our dreams, Lord, even the ones that don't seem to be working out in the timeline that we have for them, Lord, not our will but your will be done. And, and church, if that's your prayer, then just repeat this after me. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me, renew me, and lead me today. I want to worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. I'll tell you, church, it is so fun to be able to uh, do church with you. And again, um, be praying for me this week as we debut Variant to these pastors all over the world. Be praying for this big outreach. People are going to get saved because of this. And uh, last but not least, don't be, don't be uh, afraid to give online or, or text in your tithes and offerings today. Uh, with all that said, love you guys. Can't wait to share more with you this next weekend.